Golden State Media Concepts bring you the Bible Study Podcast. Reflect and journey the Bible as together we study God's Word and be inspired. Bible study made fun and informative for all ages. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Bible Study Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am happy to be with you on this fifth Sunday of Easter to talk about the texts that are signed for the fifth Sunday of Easter. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. Hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. We are going to just go ahead and jump right in with the first reading for this week, which comes to us from the book of Acts, chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it it at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean you must not call profane. This happened three times, that everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go to them and not make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Again, that is from the book of Acts, chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. And there is so much going on in this text. Um, So much. And it is really a fascinating text. One of the things that jumped out at me immediately as I was looking through this text is, first of all, it's Peter. And, you know, I have a soft spot for Peter that I, I... associate with Peter a lot that I feel like so many of us are Peter in the way we would react and behave were we one of Jesus's disciples. But the thing that noted that I noticed about this is, so he's, he's, he's having this vision, this vision of, um, go kill and eat all these things that as a good Jewish man, Peter would not have eaten before. And he says, no, um, and it's, 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 it's told him again and it's done three times. Poor Peter. <laughs> he often needs things repeated. So a couple of weeks ago, there was the text of Jesus and the disciples, Jesus appearing to the disciples, um, as they were fishing. And then as they're gathered on the shore, they're eating the fish that they have caught. And Jesus says to Peter, Peter, do you love me? And he says, of course, you know, I love you, Jesus. And Jesus says, well, then feed my sheep. And then a second time he says to Peter, Peter, do you love me? Well, feed my lambs. And a third time he says to Peter, do you love me? And Peter at this time, at that point is feeling really hurt because Jesus said to him, do you love me a third time? And Peter says, of course, you know that I love you, Lord. And Jesus says, well, then feed my sheep. And 
it was pointed out to me um, in seminary and uh, in things that I have read that this is Peter's chance at redemption, right? This is Jesus giving him the opportunity to answer and not reject Jesus, to answer and not deny Jesus. Because, of course, during the story of the crucifixion, after Jesus' arrest, Peter did deny Jesus three times. He's asked three times, aren't you a disciple of Jesus? And he says no each time. So he's given this chance by Jesus to redeem himself, to not deny Jesus, to say, yes, of course I love you, and then to be given his mission. Well, Yes. Okay. You've said this. You love me. I know you love me. I know you're a disciple. So feed my sheep. Jesus is, um, this is before the ascension, but he is still trying to prepare his disciples for the fact that they're going to have to do ministry without him, that they are going to have to take over for what Jesus has been doing in terms of feeding people spiritually, mentally, physically, etc., healing people, doing all of those things that Jesus did initially. Now the disciples have to take that over. So here again, he is being given uh, a new direction to take that ministry. And he is reticent, you know, no, 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 no. I, I'm not going to eat what I have, what is unclean or profane. I've never done it. I'm not going to start now. Uh, you know, he's a good Jewish man. He follows the rules. He follows the laws. But this vision, this, this voice keeps saying to him, no, no, you need to do this. And it makes him realize that in order to bring God's word and Jesus's message to the world, well, that they are going to be bringing this message to the world, not just to the Jewish community. They'll be bringing it to the Gentiles as well. And that's going to put them in situations where they might have to eat things that they did not eat. I've talked about this before, but figuring out this new church in those early days, well, even now, figuring out that the church was difficult because, of course, Jesus was Jewish. Jesus's disciples were Jewish and they they had grown up and lived their whole lives following the laws and the practices of Judaism. Um, So they had a very specific mindset in terms of their own religiosity. Well, Jesus's words were for everyone. God's gift of grace is for everyone. So what does that mean in terms of bringing non-Jewish people into the fold, bringing Gentiles into the fold? What does that mean in terms of, again, circumcision, things like that, eating non-kosher foods? And this this text starts with um, some anger, some some grumpiness, you know, some criticism. The, why did you go to the uncircumcised men and eat with them? Woo, now Peter really is following in, jo- in Jesus' footsteps, right? He's eating with people who are considered unclean, who are considered unacceptable. What was Jesus always doing? Eating with people he supposedly shouldn't have been eating with. And now Peter, good job, Peter. You are getting the same criticism that Jesus was getting. You are doing something right. He was eating with men who are uncircumcised. Well, as you're going about ministering to the Gentiles, this this especially comes up with with Paul's works. Um, do Gentiles then have to be circumcised? And as adults, you can see, you can imagine that that's going to be a turnoff for many adult men who do not want to come into a faith where they have to be circumcised at 20, 30, 40 years old, whatever it is. So Paul, excuse me, Peter receives this vision and what, um, yes, you were raised with these specific rules, these specific, um, ways of being, but things are changing. Jesus changed things. Jesus came to the world to bring, a different message to try to show God's love to even more people that who didn't know God's love, who didn't know, um, who, who didn't know God. And in order to do that, things had to shift a little bit. The, the status quo couldn't continue. So they're really trying to figure all of these things out. And we are going to talk more about this text as well as the psalm assigned for this Sunday. But let's go ahead and take our first break of the podcast. You're listening to the GSMC Bible Study Podcast, and I will be right back. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts 
Relationship Podcast, your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Welcome back to the GSMC Bible Study Podcast. We are speaking about the uh, text assigned to us from Acts for this week. And I do want to look at some commentary on this text because Brian Peterson's commentary, I think, is is really lovely and talks a lot about what I was speaking about before the break. He, um, he starts his commentary off by saying, Borders, Barriers, and Identity seem to be prominent not only in recent news, but in the assumptions and the worldview that all of us carry. Whether those convictions focus on borders that should be erected or maintained or on borders that ought to be thrown into the scrap heap of history, any action which challenges those convictions seems guaranteed to get a strong reaction, which is precisely what Peter got from the church in Jerusalem. We need to remember, he says, that Peter has already had his worldview rearranged by a vision from God in Acts 10, so the chapter before what we're reading from today. Peter has already gone to Cornelius' house. There he learned that God hadn't waited for the church to figure this out, but had already visited that Gentile in a vision of his own. Peter then had then preached the good news of Israel's Messiah, Jesus, to that household that was not a part of Israel. The Spirit had been given to them before Peter could even finish his sermon, in power and clarity indistinguishable from the Jerusalem church's own original experience. At that point, Peter had done what seemed obvious to him in the moment, which, but which seemed like reckless border deconstruction to those in Jerusalem. He had baptized everyone in sight, the whole Gentile household. I love that. Um, so that's the criticism that we're getting at the beginning of this. Why did you actually eat with those people? Uh, which makes me think, my goodness, were you not paying attention to Jesus? <laughs> were you not paying attention to all the people that Jesus ate with, to all of the times that someone else said, Jesus, why are you eating with those people? Um, it, yeah, so we are, we're expanding the circle. Change is happening. And then as now, change is not always comfortable. We are not always comfortable with, quote unquote, those people, whoever those people may be, maybe they're immigrants, maybe they're the LGBT community, maybe they are liberals, uh, maybe they are conservatives, maybe they are any number of thing that makes them feel like other to us. But I've said this before, and I try to remind myself of this on a regular basis. Whenever we make a distinction between us and them, chances are good Jesus is with them. Jesus is with us too, but Jesus is with them. Because Jesus is with exactly the people that we think he shouldn't be with. He's with, he's eating with sinners and tax collectors and prostitutes and lepers. And everyone that the, the us think are the them. Um, and so Jesus, of course, is with us because we are children of God, but so are they. Uh, so Jesus is going to be with them. Whenever we make a distinction between us and them, you can guarantee that Jesus is with them, which puts a different spin on it. And that's what that's what Peter is learning in, through these these encounters. And he already had an experience where he baptized Gentiles and he's getting criticized for it. But even even as open-minded as Peter was in that instance, recognizing that the spirit had been given to the Gentiles, he still has to be told three times in the vision that it's okay to eat these foods that have been previously considered to be unclean or profane, because in order to more effectively minister to people, he is going to have to eat with them. He is going to have to do what Jesus did and eat with a lot of different people. And eating with people means eating what they prepare not saying, nope, I'm not going to eat that because it it goes against my beliefs. But being welcomed by people and eating what they offer is a huge part of that society. 
And I also think that this text teaches us a lot about change. We don't like change. We don't like to leave our comfort zone. And as disciples of Christ, as children of God, we are so often called to leave our comfort zones. We are called to minister to the them that we aren't comfortable with. We are called to stand up for our brothers and sisters in Christ and demonstrate that God loves them just as God loves us. And sometimes it's so easy to get stuck in the No, God loves us. We are doing everything right. God doesn't love them. They are sinners. Well, think of who Jesus hung out with. Sinners. People who weren't always considered to be appropriate, who weren't always considered to be upstanding citizens, etc., etc., etc. Whenever we put ourselves above another person, another group of people, you can darn well guarantee that Jesus is going to be sitting down and eating with those people, um, whether that's actually or metaphorically. And so we have to remember this and we have to be open to change. We have to be open to where the spirit is sending us and open to the fact that God, God's love is so much bigger than our human understanding could ever be. And to me, oh, to me, that is just beautiful and challenging And as much as I want to think that I am an open and loving and caring person, I know I still hold prejudices. I still hold biases within my heart that there are things that I, that there are reactions that I have that I have to go back and and think about why did I react that way? Why am I uncomfortable with this person or that person or this group or that group? What's going on here? Why am I, how am I being challenged here? And when I can remember that this person, that person, this group, that group are also God's beloved children, that grace has been given to them as grace has been given to me, it makes it a little easier. It doesn't mean that I always agree with people. It doesn't mean that it just automatically poof, uh, magically changes my entire outlook and makes me Jesus. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice if we could just suddenly be like Jesus and act like Jesus and love like Jesus, but we have to work at it because we are not Jesus and, um, probably a good thing. Jesus is Jesus and that's good. Um, and we are not God, but we have these examples before us. We've been given the models. We've been given the teachings. We have been told to go and do likewise. So we, we have to break down those barriers. We have to meet people where they are and we have to, um, bring God's love to lots and lots of different situations and people, even though those situations, certain people might not always be smack in our comfort zone. In fact, they might be 10, 15, 20, a hundred miles outside of our comfort zone. That tends to be where God sends us, right? So let's go ahead and move on from the Acts text to the psalm assigned for this week. Um, The psalm comes to us from, it is not from, it is Psalm 148. And those verses are as follows. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he has commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted, his glory above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. And that is Psalm 148. And that is, that's a lot of praising. Um, I, 
uh, we are going to take a break. And uh, well, during the break, I'm going to count the number of times the word praise is used in Psalm 148. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Bible Study Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Bible Study Podcast. We were speaking before the break about Psalm 148. Well, I read Psalm 148. We hadn't really gotten into the discussion about it yet, but I said during the break I was going to count the number of times the word praise was used, and I just did a quick skim, so I may have miscounted, but I counted 11 times in 14 verses. Uh, some verses don't have the word praise in them. Some verses have it at least twice, if not more times. So... Um, it, <laughs> it makes me think of like drinking games. I'm not encouraging drinking, you know, we could drink water or whatever, or, or, you know, some kind of game where every time the word praise is you take a drink. Um, no, I'm not encouraging alcoholism. Uh, drink Kool-Aid drink. No, that's too sugary. Just drink water. Um, you'll be well hydrated by the end of this Psalm. If you drink, um, every time the word praise is mentioned. Okay. So praise the Lord. This is obviously a praise Psalm. Um, if it's not a praise Psalm, then I don't know why the word praise is, uh, so very much used. And actually, in one of the commentaries I was reading by Shauna Hannon, she brings up this uh, same point. So she's talking about uh, the pro the practice of Lectio Divina, which is a way of reading the Psalms, of reading the scriptures, and you read through them multiple times. And she says that, um, and she says, as I read through um, the Psalm, I noticed the number of times I said praise. After three readings, it was nearly 39 times. So three readings time, three times 11 is 33. So I think I must have miscounted. Um, or she was reading a slightly different translation. I'm not sure. But um, praise him, praise the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. And she says that since the practice of Lectio Divina encourages participants not to judge what comes to mind, uh, I'll risk sharing with you what came to mind. Um, I was imagining that silly arcade game, Whack-A-Mole. See, okay, I don't feel so bad about my drinking game idea. Um, you know, the, the one, she says, where the moles pop up randomly and the player tries to whack them back into their holes. <laughs> it's not the latter, whacking the moles back into their holes that led to the association. Um, especially, she says, since the psalmist very well could have had moles in mind when crafting verse 10. Oh my goodness, what is verse 10? Uh, hold on, now we have to find out what verse 10 is. Um, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things, and flying birds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the psalmist was thinking of moles, but anyway, rather it's the randomly popping up part. Instead of moles, she says, the repetition in fast succession of praise in the psalm was a reminder of the abundant and random nature of reasons to praise the Lord that arise in any given day. And then she goes on, I wake up, praise the Lord. I have food to eat. Praise him. I have meaningful work to do. Praise the name of the Lord. I encounter people who know my name and care for me. Praise him. Praise him. I breathe in the crisp, clean air and note the gorgeous magnolia tree attempting to bloom as I walk to work. Praise the Lord from the earth. These are the reasons to praise the Lord, and I have not even been awake for two hours, she says. 
Wow. I love that. Um, I, take some time for me, would you? And, and think of the things. I'm going to try to do this uh, this week. Uh, what what can I praise God for? I mean, obviously waking up is, you know, I'm waking up, I'm breathing. Sometimes I'm not breathing great because I have allergies and asthma, but I am breathing. Um, praise God for that. I wake up and I look over at my husband who is sleeping next to me. No, that's not true. He always wakes up before I do, but sometimes he's still awake and, and, and there when I wake up, but I look over and there he is. Praise God. I look at my fur babies, the sweetest little chihuahuas in the world who love to snuggle and who make me, um, who just make me smile and who make me feel better when I'm feeling terrible. Praise the Lord for babies. Uh, I think of my family again, a reason to praise God. It's raining today, um, which is always wonderful for the earth. So praise God for that, especially since California has been in a drought for so long. We could definitely use the water. It's a weird time of the year for it to be raining. Not a weird time of the year for it to be raining in other parts of the United States, but in Northern California, we don't usually get rain this time of year. So praise God for that. What are the things that you can... Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get the whack-a-mole image out of my head, but what are the things that pop up and you whack them with praise? Um I'm so sorry. Uh, what are those things? I'm going to try to take some definite, um, deliberate noticing. Mindfulness. That's what my friend Christine calls it. She's been on the podcast before and she she doesn't call it that. That's what it is. But she, she tries to practice mindfulness and experiencing these things while they're happening. You know, pay, paying attention to the gifts in our lives so often it's so easy to just get bogged down in the horrible things that happen and it's been a it's been a crazy week around here we've had car issues we had um one of our bearded dragons had, had an injury to his tail when he was um which unfortunately was my fault i i didn't pay attention and his tail got injured so i felt horrible i still feel horrible he's gonna be okay but I feel horrible. I was trying to comfort him. He was freaked out. He bit me in the neck. My bearded dragon bit me in the neck. I have this huge bearded dragon mouth shaped circle of teeth. And then this, this, this giant bruise inside there. It's very tender. Uh, he didn't break the skin. Thank goodness. But it's so easy to get bogged down on that. We're having car troubles. Uh, I, I, I injured my dragon. Then my dragon repaid me by biting me. I can't blame him there. Um, you know, there's bills to pay. There's this to do. The, the rain is making the grass grow and the weeds grow and everything. And we have to, it's so easy to get bogged down in the blah. What are the reasons to celebrate? What are the reasons to praise God? Do me a favor and pay attention to those reasons. And if you could share them with me, I would love it if you would come onto social media and share the reasons that you see that may seem random or whatever that you can praise God. Um, the, the beautiful flowers that are blooming here, those give me, those give me reasons to celebrate those. They make me smile. Um, just if you take the time to be mindful about life around you, what are the things that you see? What are the things that you experience? What are the things that you notice that, are worthy of praising God. And the beautiful thing about praising God is that you can praise God for anything. It doesn't have to be something major. It doesn't have to be something big like a promotion at work or, you, you know, all the big life events, getting married or uh, having a baby or all of those things. It can be something as simple as noticing that one beautiful rose that you hadn't noticed before or the fact that you woke up and... um Sometimes the fact that I wake up and my sinuses aren't completely plugged all up and I can breathe better is a reason to say, that is wonderful. Praise God that these things exist in the world. I'm going to try very hard 
throughout the coming days to notice these things. If I'm really good, I might even be able to write things down. Uh, We'll see. I'm I'm not always great at remembering those sorts of things, but I am going to try to at least mentally notice, if not um, actually write them down. And I encourage you to do the same thing if that's something that you want to do. And if you want to share them with me, I would love to hear about the things that have caused you to praise God during this coming week. You can um, always hit me up on social media. I would love to hear from you. I think on that note, we are going to wrap up this episode. Thank you so much for joining me at the GSMC Bible Study Podcast. Please join me again on Wednesday when we will look at the uh, the next two texts, the text from Revelation and the text from the Gospel of John assigned for this fifth Sunday of Easter. Thank you so much as always. Hope you have are having a wonderful weekend and I do hope that you are always remembering that you are a beautiful and beloved child of God. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.